since we last gathered together, but many people may not know that we're still streaming virtually. So please, everybody reach out to those who you know who are part of our family to make sure that they are connected. Greetings, beloved. My name is Reverend Rashad Raymond Moore, and I serve as pastor of the First Baptist Church of Crown Heights in Brooklyn, New York. While we remain socially distant during our quarantine, we can still join together virtually for worship, Bible study, prayer, and so much more. So I'm inviting you this week to join us from the comfort of your home on Tuesday evening for Flashback First Baptist, an opportunity to hear inspiring sermons and uplifting music from our pastors as well as our ministry of music. And then and on Thursday mornings, join us at seven o'clock a.m. for our family prayer led by the deacons of our church. And then on Sunday morning, what a wonderful day to start the week. Join us at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live or YouTube as we come together to worship God, to focus our attention on the great things that God is doing even in this season. Oftentimes we encourage our family and friends to come with us to church, but during this quarantine, the church is coming home to you. We would love to have you be a part of our family. So if you don't have a church home and you live in the New York City area or anywhere, you can join us via our website at myfbcch.org. We would love to have you as a part of our family. You are here. Thank you for being here. While you are here, we hope that you will hear something that will inspire you to live. Good morning, First Baptist family. Welcome to our virtual worship service on Sunday, July 12th, 2020. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I invite you this morning to join us in sharing this video. You can like it, you can post it. Invite all of your friends to come worship with us this morning. I invite you to join us and worship with us in the chat section of our video. Whatever you do, come on and let's worship together. Now you know that July is usually the time that we're traveling about, going to visit family and friends, going to family reunions down south. But we're not doing that this year because of just the circumstances of this moment. But in spite of it all, we 
will celebrate the gift of family in July. This is National Family Month. And so I'm asking that you would join us in this celebration as we celebrate just the gift that we're not alone, that God has given us mothers and fathers and friends and church family. We're just glad not to be alone today. So let's come and let's worship together this morning. So as we prepare, send to your heart, send to your mind as we go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, this morning, we thank you for the gift of worship. We thank you for the opportunity just to gather as your people in spirit and in truth. And wherever we are, O oh God, in our homes across this nation, even around the world, we ask now, O oh God, that you would bless us with your presence, that we might be strengthened by this woman of worship. And as we go forward, we ask that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We have been blessed by a rich tradition of African-American hymn writers. And this morning's hymn comes to us out of the Church of God in Christ, written by one of the founders of the church, Reverend Charles Price Jones. And the title of the hymn is Come Unto Me. Simply says, hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. Come ye heavy laden, come to me and rest. Come no longer tarry, I alone will bear. Bring me every burden and bring me every care, wherever you are. The words are on your screen. Stop chatting for a minute, and I want you to sing to the glory of God. Come unto me with Reverend Rashad McPherson. Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. Oh, ye heavy laden, come to me in rest. Come no longer tarry, I your load will bear. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Come unto me. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Hear me and be blessed. I am meek and lowly. Come and trust my mind. Come, my yoke is easy, and my burdens lie. Are you disappointed, wandering here and there, dragging chains of doubt and loaded down with care? Do unholy feelings struggle in your breast? Bring your case to Jesus, he will give you rest. Come unto me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, hear me and be blessed. I am the and lowly come and trust my mind come my yoke is easy and my burdens light have you by temptation often conquered been? Has a sense of weakness brought distress within? Christ will sanctify you if you claim his best. In the Holy Spirit, he will give you rest. Come unto me. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Hear me and be blessed. I am weak and lowly. Come and trust my might. Come, my yoke is easy, and my burdens light. Come on, clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God. 
time with the voice of triumph. Come on, the triumph of people. Make some noise. Hey, yeah. here we go. Everybody tell somebody. Everybody tell somebody. Tell them that you know somebody. Tell them that you know somebody. King of kings and Lord of lords. King of kings and Lord of lords. You're the one that I adore. You're the one that I adore. Everybody clap your hands. Everybody hey. clap your hands. Everybody do your dance. Everybody do your dance. Everybody stomp your feet. Everybody stomp your feet. Celebrate the Lord with me. Celebrate I love this part. Let's celebrate. 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 Come on, let's go up to the top and take a little hop. Everybody tell somebody. Everybody tell somebody. Tell them that. Know somebody, tell them that you know somebody. King of kings and Lord of lords, King of kings and Lord of lords. You're the one that I adore. You're the one I that I adore. adore. Everybody clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. Everybody do your dance. Everybody do your dance. Everybody, do your dance. Everybody stomp your feet. Everybody Come stomp on, your feet. Celebrate the Lord with me. Celebrate the Lord with me. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Because God's been good. Let's celebrate. 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 Stay right there. Let's celebrate. 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 Come on, let's take it out and celebrate our God. We declare He's holy. He's holy. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. He's mighty. He's mighty. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. He's righteous. He's righteous. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. He's strong. He's strong. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. He's worthy. He's worthy. Declare. Here we go. Lift those hands if you love him. Lift those hands and say yeah. Yeah. Lift those hands if you love him. Lift those hands if you love him. Say yeah. Lift those hands if you love him. Lift those hands if you love him. Say yeah. Lift those hands if you love him. Say yeah. 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 If you got a reason, I got a reason. Everybody here, say yeah. Yeah. He's strong. He's strong. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. He's holy. He's holy. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. He's strong. 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 Come on. Our God is a mighty God, and He's mighty to save. He's mighty to deliver. So lift your head up, whatever it is you're experiencing. We want you to know that our God can handle it. Hey, hey. And if CC one, CC one was here, she would say like this. Break it down. She would say, He's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder, he's a wonder. Then we say, He's a mighty God, y'all say, He's a wonder, he's a wonder. Everybody say, He's a wonder, he's a wonder. Sound real good. He's a wonder, he's a wonder. He's a mighty God, he's a mighty God. Stand right there. He's a wonder, he's a wonder. 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 He's a mighty God, he's a mighty God. He's a wonder, he's a wonder. 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 He's a mighty God. He's a mighty 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 God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty He's a mighty God. 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 He's a mighty God
Hey, hey, hey. Praise the Lord, First Baptist. Hey. You should be rocking on your sofa right now. I don't know if you in the kitchen, you in the hallway, but I need you to listen to this sound right now. Because we still here in the midst of the pandemic. God has never let us down yet. So if you know God is good for you, put them hands together real quick. We may have lost a few, but we've gained a lot. They closed the church doors, but the church lives within us. And if you believe what I'm saying right now, you know your God is good to you as he is good to all of us. I need you to put those hands together and nice and smoothly. Just repeat after me. You ready, fellas? Everybody say, I, I am Yeah. 
shall prosper It won't work No weapon formed against me Shall prosper It won't work God will do what he said he would do He will stand by your side he will come through, said God will do what he said he would do. He will stand by his word. He will come through no weapon formed against me shall prosper.
This morning, our sermon reflection comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew the 13th chapter, and I want to shed light on the eighth verse. And it simply says, but some of the seeds fell on good ground and produced a crop, some a hundred times what had been sown, some 60 and 30 times. Some of the seeds fell on good ground. This morning, I wanna to preach to us as we begin to celebrate this family month. I wanna preach from this subject, the warmth of other suns, the warmth of other suns. July is considered National Family Month. And like many of you, I always look forward to going down south to visit my family. Many of you know that this is family reunion time. This is the time where we pack up the fried chicken and we get the dinner rolls and we get the pound cake and the cans of soda and we pack it all in the van and we make our way down south. We get down south and when we get there, we meet the rest of our family members. And on Saturday, we all wear the same t-shirt with the same, everybody's family got the same tree on the t-shirt with your ancestors' names. You, come on, this is what we do. You know what I'm talking about. But, but we're not able to do that this year because of this pandemic. But as I begin to think about what it means to have a family, what my family means to me, what comes to mind is one of my favorite books by Isabel Wilkerson. It's called The Warmth of Other Sons. It tells the epic journey of six million African-Americans between the years 1915 and 1970 who made their way up out of the South and decided to replant themselves in places like Oakland, California, who planted themselves in places like Chicago and New York and D.C. and Baltimore. And the truth of the matter is our church would not be our church had it not been for the Great Migration, had it not only been for the folks who migrated from the South, but also for all of the many people who migrated from the Caribbean. That's who we are. That's what our church is about. We are a home to so many people who decided to plant their seeds in the warmth of other sons. As a matter of fact, I would not be standing here had it not been for the great migration. Yes, my grandparents from Williamston, North Carolina and Hartsville, South Carolina, decided to pack up their entire lives during those years and made their way up to the North. Isabel Wilkerson says there are so many people who would not ever be in existence had it not been for the great migration. I'm talking about Michelle Obama. I'm talking about Spike Lee. I'm talking about Miles Davis. I'm talking about Toni Morrison. I'm talking about me. And I'm even, I might be talking about you. People who decided to plant their seeds in the warmth of other sun. It was Richard Wright who says that he took his seed. He took his entire life and he decided to move up to New York to plant his seed in the warmth of other suns. What I'm telling you in this season, in the season of protesting and resisting, in the season of marching and demanding change. Don't forget about the resistance of our ancestors. No, they all didn't march. No, they didn't all sit in. No, they didn't all boycott, but they were the ones who resisted the South because they decided to take their seeds and plant it in the warmth of other suns. And don't forget, when they met, when six million people left the South, it destroyed the economy of the South. It destroyed the sharecropping business. It destroyed factories in the South because six million people decided to take their seeds and plant it someplace else. And as we talk about family this month, I want you to remember that God has called each and every one of us to still flourish in seasons of frustration. I know the theme of our church here is becoming, but becoming is not canceled. God still calls us to plant new seeds, even in seasons of frustration. And that's something of what was going on in our text. On a summer day, Jesus is standing on a beach in shorts and flip flops, standing in a boat, teaching masses of people, masses of people who know what it's like to be disinherited, masses of people who know what it's like to be anxious and frustrated, masses of people who know what it's like to be disappointed, trying to make ends meet. He calls all of these people to the boat. He calls all of these folk to the beach and they've come to hear what this man has to say. And when he opens his mouth to speak, he tells them the story of a sower. Here is a man who went out sowing seeds 
and the seats fell on different ground. Some of the seats fell on the sidewalk and because they never made it to the dirt, they did not grow. Other seats fell between the sidewalk and the soil. They were close enough, but not close enough that they grew, but they only last for a moment because they never were able to grow roots. And then there were other seeds that got caught up in the thorns of life. And as they were trying to grow, they got choked up by life. But he tells us there was one other seed that fell into good ground. And when that seed fell into good ground, it produced a harvest 100 times more than what was planted. Somebody's asking me, Reverend, make all of this make sense to me. And I would tell you that Jesus was trying to get those people as he is trying to get us to understand that even in your moment of frustration, even as you're antsy waiting to see whether schools will be open, even when you're not sure how things will turn out at the rest of the year, I'm telling you that even in your seasons of frustration, Jesus is trying to get us to refocus because even while you don't know so much that's going to happen, even though you're not sure how things will turn out, this is still a good season to refocus all of your anxiety and to start planting your seeds even in this moment of frustration. They didn't realize it, but Jesus was actually throwing shade at them. He is a sower and they are, they are the soil. This was his life. He walked around preaching. He knew what it was like to preach a sermon and there was half of the church paying attention, other half wasn't paying attention. Some people came to church just to see what was going on. Others came just to be curious. But there were some people who came fully focused on the goal. And because they were focused, their plant grew and it grew into good soil. What is Jesus trying to tell us on this summer morning? You sitting at home watching me on your TV. What is Jesus trying to teach you? through this parable of the sower. Come now and see what the Lord has to say to us from this parable. What is Jesus trying to tell us for the living of these days? The first lesson that we find in this text is that he warns us about living on the surface. There were some seeds that never grew because they just laid on the sidewalk. I want you to know this morning that Jesus is reminding each and every one of us, don't be too busy to see the beauty of life, that even in the midst of this moment, there is still some beauty in life. And the danger of living a surface level life is that oftentimes we can be too distracted by all of the demands of life that we're no longer able to dream. We're so busy by the streets of life and the calls of life and the notifications of life that we no longer see the beauty. And you, I don't want you to live a surface level life. Surface level living is that you've traveled miles to see Niagara Falls only to get there to be distracted by what somebody else posted on Instagram. Don't live your life on the surface and you will never be able to cultivate an appreciation for the beauty of life as long as you're distracted. Sometimes we can be so busy chasing the, the happenings of life that we never have the chance just to sit and bask in the beauty of life. And this summer, even though we're sheltered in, even though your vacation plans have been canceled, still leave some room just to behold the beauty of the Lord. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. And I don't want you to be so busy living your life that you can't stop to see the beauty of life. And the only way you can stop to see the beauty of life, beloved, is if you would calm down, if you would sit long enough just to settle down from all of the distractions, just to witness the there's still beauty in life. You know, I can't stand talking to people and every time they open their mouth, they got something bad to say. Come on, you just can't tell me that everything in your world is bad. There's still something beautiful about this moment. I know things didn't work out the way it was supposed to work out. This year was not the becoming that I had in mind, but I still know that there's something beautiful. God has made everything beautiful in its time. So don't allow your brokenness and your disappointment to blind you from the beauty that's still available in life. Don't live your life on the surface. But secondly, Jesus tells them, don't 
Rush. Oh, that's a good challenge. Don't rush. Don't rush until your roots have been put in the ground. Don't rush until your roots have developed. And that's why the second seed never grew. It, it grew overnight and it popped up overnight. But by the end of the, the week, it was already dead because it grew. But it grew so fast that its roots never, ever developed. And I'm talking to somebody this morning who you've been working on your dream and you've been working on that vision and you've been working on that plan and you've been discouraged because it seems like it's not working. But I can hear Jesus telling the people, don't. Rush, you, 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 you're, you're, you're rushing so fast that you're not able to develop. And you know, oftentimes, if you take the chicken out of the oven too fast, you'll end up sick because it looks done on the outside, but it has not finished on the inside. And every now and again, God has to remind us in order for the dream to grow, you've got to learn how to wait. And sometimes God has us plant our seeds and it takes years to grow. Have you ever tried to plant a tree? You plant a tree and you don't see the benefits of it for years to come. But even in the midst of your frustration, you still got to water something that you cannot see. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Think about our ancestors who, who left the South and they came up to New York and they rented a room. Some of it was rat infested, some of them, four people in the room, five people in the room, but they held on to a dream even though they could not see. And I wanna tell you that each and every one of us, many of us are living in houses that we did not build. And we're eating off of trees and, and enduring and enjoying blessings that we did not plant only because your grandmother saw a dream that she did not live to see. But the beauty of it is y'all, they didn't rush. Even when they had hell going on in New York, they didn't leave. They didn't rush to dream. And I'm telling you that if you would in this moment still trust God, that even when you can't see it, there's still something going on under the surface. Even when you don't see the growth, you, you're growing right now. Even when you don't see your becoming, you're still becoming because in order to, to become, you've got to first plant some roots. Because if you don't plant roots, I don't care how beautiful you are. I don't care how bad you are. But if you don't got no roots, what? Come on, brother. What good is it if she looked bad on the outside, but her soul ain't done? Sister, what good is it if he got everything you've been looking for? He got the car. He got the job. He, he meets the profile, but he looks good on the top. But his roots, he has no roots. She ain't got no edges. You want to make sure that at the end of the day that your becoming starts from the inside and it works to the outside. But thirdly, he says that there were some seeds that did not grow because their seeds were choked up by the thorns of life. I, that's, that's, that's all of us, that God has given you a dream. God has given you a vision and somehow you know exactly what it is that God has called you to do, but you can't give birth to a new dream because you are so distracted. You hear what I'm saying? You're so distracted. You know, I heard a brother, I, I, don't, mean to, I don't mean to give you all of these book references and stuff, I'm just a nerd, I apologize. There's a brother named Cal Newport. He's a white brother, but Cal Newport, and I heard him on The Breakfast Club, Power 105. He has a book called Deep Work. And in this book, this brother argues and says that oftentimes we think that people who do a whole lot of things at one time are successful because people can multitask, do this and do that at the same time, pray and cook at the same time, text and drive at the same time. We think that they're successful. He says, but watch this, contrary to popular belief, the most successful people in the future will be determined by those who learn to commit to the discipline of living a distracted free life. Here is what I'm telling you, is that the most successful people in the world are not those who work and do multiple things at one time, but the successful people of the future are those who learn how to live distracted just for three to four hours a day. Somebody's gonna to say to me, Reverend, I multitask and I'm doing fine. Yes, but just because you're functioning does not mean that you're flourishing. And we've learned how to function and do a lot of things at one time, but we have not learned how to flourish. 
I, I'm, I'm, come on here. Jesus said to the disciples, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Master, why could we not cast out the demon out of the child? And Jesus said, this kind only comes about by prayer and fasting. And what Jesus was trying to teach them is that in order to go deeper in God, in order to go deeper in your dreams, in order to go deeper in your vision, you've got to commit to a singleness of mind. When was the last time you spent an hour undistracted? When was the last time you were able to focus on one thing at a time? When was the last time you were able to pray and you didn't check your phone in the middle of your prayer because you got distracted? And the most important commodity in our world right now, beloved, is attention. Everybody wants your attention. But here's, a, I'm talking to you right now. The devil loves, the Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil comes to swift you as wheat. And as long as you remain distracted, you will never be able to plant new seeds because everybody, everybody else got a piece of your mind except you. You hear what I just said? Everybody gets a piece of your mind except you. And what good is it? What profit a man or woman to gain the whole wide world if you lose yourself? What pro what does it profit a man or woman to spend your entire life working on somebody else's dream, working for somebody else, doing somebody else's work that you're never able to give life to your own dream? But there is good news. The good news in this text is that there was one more seed that did grow. And Jesus said that that seed grew into good ground. And because that seed got deep enough, oh, that's it. It gets deeper and deeper. Because that seed got deep enough into the soil, the Bible says that it profit, it prospered 100 times, 20 times, 30 times more than what was planted. I'm telling you today, beloved, as I close this sermon, that God is trying to get your attention. God is trying to tell you something. That even in the midst of this season of frustration, this is a good season to plant new seeds and plant yourself in the warmth of other sons. I, I think that's good news this morning. Don't lose sight. Don't lose sight of what God has given you. I know there's a whole lot of protesting in the world and we ought to protest, but Every time you plant another seed in the ground, every time you plant another vision, every time you try again, every time you give life the best that you've got, you are planting your seed into good ground. But I want to know, I want you to know this morning that the best thing to do in this moment, in this summertime, as you put your flip flops on, because the nail salon is open again, as you try to go to the beach this year, as you try to get some rest, don't cancel out your vacation because what God really needs for us to do as people is to practice the singleness of mind. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I, I want you this this week. This is your homework to figure out what that one thing is one thing and know that God is able to make your dreams come true through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The doors of our church are open this morning. You may be looking for a church home and you may have never said yes to God before. I'm telling you that this is a good opportunity. This is a good season to begin a journey with Jesus Christ. People ask the question, what good is the religion of Jesus to those whose backs are against the wall? And the good news this morning is that the Jesus is always calling us, reminding us that life doesn't have the last word. Failure does not have the last word. Disappointment doesn't have the last word. And your journey with Jesus each and every day shows you how God is able to take all of the mess of the world and allow you to plant something new in the spite of all that's going on. Start to say something else. So oftentimes God will allow you to take all the soil or we call it manure, all of the manure of life. You put whatever word you want in. Take all the manure of life, and in spite of all the manure of life, put your seed in the middle of it and watch something else grow. He took and made something beautiful out of my life. I'm talking to someone this morning 
who's been dealing with disappointment, who's been dealing with frustration, and you're not sure where you're going to go after this. Your mind is not right. Things are not settling. You've lost loved ones this season. Godfather of mine asked me the other day, he says, Rashad, tell me where am I, what am I supposed to do as I'm getting over, or I'm trying to heal from the death of my sister. And I told him, the best way to heal from bereavement and grief, the best way to deal with loss is to begin to put your hands in the ground again and allow God to do something new in your life. This morning, as we come to the altar, I want you in the comfort of your home to begin to think about what is my one thing? What am I putting into the soil this season? What am I trying to plant? Maybe it's a new vision. Maybe it's a new calling. Maybe you're wrestling with the calling to ministry. Maybe it's a new business that God has given you. Whatever it is, I know that God is able. And the Bible tells us all things still work together. But a part of all things working together is that you've got to plant yourself. Plant yourself in a place where God is able to do something new with you. I want you to pray with me this morning. As we go to the throne of grace, I want you to begin to think about what your one thing is so that God is able to bring something new out of a season of frustration. Let us pray. Eternal God, we are so grateful this morning for the gift of life and for life itself. And God, now we ask that as we come to the close of this week and the beginning of a new one, we ask that now, oh God, that you would touch everybody who's watching this live stream. God, you have given us the gift of family. We thank you, oh God, for mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers. And when my mother and father even forsake me, the Lord shall take me up. Thank you, oh God, for, for giving us church family. Thank you for giving us communities where we can grow and become all that you have called us to be. So God, somebody is watching this who's been disappointed. Somebody is watching this who's been furloughed. Somebody is watching this who's been unemployed. Somebody is watching this who has lost loved ones. Somebody is watching this who's not sure what the end will be, but yet in spite of it all, you tell us that there is still possibilities and there's still hope that all things still work together. So God, we're asking now that you would focus our minds back on you. Center our minds, oh God, on you. God, we're tossed to and fro. God, we're tossed round about and we don't know which way to go. But I hear you saying one thing, just desire one thing, seek after that one thing. And if you would seek after that one thing, that one thing, oh God, is you. You're able to focus our minds enough that we might hush out the anxiety of the world and focus on planting something new. So we ask, oh God, that you would use us, that you would walk with us, that you would guide us, that even in our season of frustration, we might take our seeds and plant them in good ground. And today, oh God, we're taking our seeds, we're planting them and focusing them on you. And we know that we shall reap a great harvest. This is our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I will be what you've called me to be. I'll say
that's what I'll be Good morning, First Baptist. This morning, I am joined today by Digital Girl. This is the closeout of our Bless Somebody Else campaign. You have been supportive over the last couple of weeks, and so we thank God that we have been able to bless so many people through your gifts, through your tithes, through your sacrifice. This morning, I am joined by Michelle Gall, who is the founder and executive director of Digital Girl Incorporated, as well as Tony Robinson who is the president and programming director of Digital Girl. Now, Digital Girl is a pro, is an organization that's right in our backyard in Crown Heights that's working with inner city youth and especially girls to prepare them for the generation to come, for the future of technology through science and so much more. So I'm glad to have this conversation with them this morning. And good morning and welcome to First Baptist. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us. Good morning as well. So tell us a little bit about the mission of Digital Girl. How did it get started and what's what's the driving force that has led you all to plant this tree in Brooklyn? Uh, both Tony and I have backgrounds in technology. Um, I'm a digital media and marketing specialist. Um, Tony is a software engineer uh, for over almost 20, 25 years now and way before the revolution started for STEM, right? Uh, so she's one of our pioneers and what we realized, um, you know, we've known each other for too many years to say, right, on, um, in a, on a recording. <laughs> um, and, you know, what we noticed over our careers was just the lack of representation for women in STEM fields and uh, the stigma that's associated with following those paths. And then what happens when you're always the only, you know, person of color, particularly a woman of color, in the room and we really wanted to change uh, that trend. Um, that's right, Michelle and I talked about it for many years. We kept saying, somebody needs to do something. Why aren't women coming into the field? And you know, year after year we would talk about it. And then one time we looked at each other and we said, I think we're that somebody and we have to actually do some action here. And obviously you know where we are now, Digital Girl Inc. Um, is here and we've taught more than 5,000 students so far. Something that we want to give back to our community and teach them something new. Absolutely. Wonderful. Wonderful. So now the last four months has turned upside down because of COVID-19 and then we had a major protest against police brutality that's still growing. So tell us a little bit about how this season of COVID-19 of these uh, uprisings, how this has changed or affected the work of Digital Girl? Well, we have gone completely digital. Uh, we started a virtual hangout, which is on our digitalgirlinc.com page, just a little plug there. Um, but we have a virtual hangout and people can come on there and see activities that they can do on their own. But we have guided activities at certain times of the day and we teach to all age levels. Yes, you know, it's it's been, a difficult time as you mentioned and we really wanted to be there for the community you know we we really do believe that as nonprofits we're the backbones of the, the community um, and you know with our youth um, instructors we did talk to them about you know the difference between them and their friends so they had a lot of friends who lost employment but because they're working in this digital field they were able to keep their employment get on your soapbox for a moment and help us to understand the importance of closing the digital gap or the digital divide given this season. You know, we are a congregation, multi-generational congregation. We have members who are fresh to Facebook who never thought they would be on Facebook. But after 17 weeks of not being in church, we realized that technology is not something that's evil. It's something that we really need to embrace for the good. So 
if there's one thing that you want our congregation to know this morning, what should we know from two of the finest women in our community who have the years in computer science and technology? What does the Church of Jesus Christ in Brooklyn need to know about technology moving forward in this uncertain moment? Okay, well, I like to say that, you know, technology is something that everyone is going to need to learn. And it's digital and coding and those types of things are the new literacy. Each person has to learn it and you have to be able to express yourself and be creative in a digital world. And this is what we're trying to ex explain and expose our youth to, but our entire community to. And it's not saying you have to be an expert, but mm -hmm. every job is going to have some sort of technology base to it and you're going to need to know it. I mean, I always tell the story about, you know, even doctors now. Doctors have to know technology. There was a doctor who didn't want to put her, her charting on, on the computer and she lost her license. You know, you have to learn how to, you know, incorporate technology into every single field. And um, one more thing before I throw it to Michelle, uh, we are opening a technology center right in Crown Heights at the Bedford Union Armory and it will be open to the community and have open hours where people can come in, but we're going to also have scheduled classes for all age groups. Absolutely, you know, uh, we need to see ourselves as creators and innovators, um, you know, just like we were in our native Africa, right? We were uh, not slaves, we were kings and queens that they took here and you know, we need to see ourselves in that light and not be afraid to embrace new technology. It's like Tony said, you don't have to be an expert, but we shouldn't be shying away from the subject. It's important for us as adults to, to be leaders so that the kids can see us and they can say, you know what, they're doing it so I can do it better, right? Because that's how we think when we're young, right? <laughs> we know everything go. we can do. Wow. I want to thank you both for joining me this morning for this wonderful interview. And First Baptist Church of Crown Heights, your neighbors from just around the corner, we're so happy to sponsor and to support most of all the work of Digital Girl. As a pastor in Brooklyn who has been virtual for the last 17 weeks, I can tell you how important it is that we bridge our spirituality with technology. This is not just about new computers and Wi-Fi. It's technology that's literally bringing people together who on any other circumstance will be at home, isolated and alone. So it's bringing, there would be no church, there is no church of the future without technology. So I thank you for taking the time to pour into young people, young people who are really going to lead the church forward. And I can tell you, Digital Girl is planting seeds for the future. Let's give this morning through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Baptist, I want to first begin by thanking you for your overwhelming support of our Bless Somebody Else campaign. Over the last seven weeks, we've had the blessed privilege to serve our community organizations as locally as around the corner and as globally as Panama uh, over the last couple of weeks because of your sacrifice of giving. Each week, we've tithed a portion of our contribution, your contributions, as a body to a organization that's already on the ground and because of you we have been able to give away over ten thousand dollars over the last four months and i'm so glad that you have partnered with us in this effort i want to ask you now to continue to give it has been because of your overwhelming support of our church that we've been able to carry out the mission of our church. You may give now online or via text or stop by the church. Whatever you do, God loves a cheerful giver and we are grateful for your continued support of our church. Let us pray. Bless now, O oh God, these offerings to thy will and purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. First Baptist family, Thank you so much for joining us for worship again. And I pray that as you go ahead and start your day, that you remain safe. I know that it's looking beautiful outside. It's summer days and it's feeling hot outside, but still keep your mask on. Remember to stay socially distant. I love you, I miss you. Many people are asking, when will the church reopen? Beloved, I, I miss church as much as you do. 
but I also know that all of our trusted sources tell us that it is not safe for us to reopen again, but we will consider as we move forward probably towards the fall. But again, let's prayerfully consider this as we keep in mind the safety and the health of our members. One more thing, I have one, more, one announcement because this feels like church. Pastor People has been on, on hiatus for a couple of weeks, but I'm excited to join you again on July 22nd as we start our book and Bible study on Jesus and the Disinherited by Howard Thurman. It's a wonderful text. It's one of my favorite books, my favorite writer, and I'm so glad to have this journey with you. I won't go into details right now, but I'm looking forward to that. Now may God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the road always rise to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. And may God continue to hold you in the palm of his hands until we gather again. Keep the faith and I'll see you soon. The word declares that we have already overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I'm healed, I'm healed today is my testimony. Can anybody say that with me? Come on, let's sing. I've got a story to tell you about some things that I've been through, but I'm healed. Oh, I'm healed. Had some ups and some downs. and some downs. Almost level to the ground, but I'm healed. Oh, I'm healed. I had to wrestle all night long. So much on my mind, on my mind, but I'm healed. Oh, I'm healed. Oh, I'm healed. Had some sunshine, had some sunshine, some rain, heartache and some pain, heartache and some pain.
No matter what the circumstances I'm still here I'm more than a conqueror Because Jesus Christ is here I am here May have some scars May have some scars It didn't always feel good, I'm still here. but I'm still here. Disappointments, Disappointments. I, I am here. here. They have some scars. I am here. I am here. I am here. I am here. I'm still here. Confess it over your life. Disappointments, I am here. I am here.